Hey everybody, I have a special treat for you. I'm up here in Vermont uh, at Ben's house. And How you doing? Ben and I met online uh, through the YouTube channel. And uh, Ben, what do you do? I, I install solar uh, PV and solar hot water and heat pumps for a living. So um, kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, Which is awesome. Yeah, and then, then in my spare time, I tinker with it at my house. So. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, today we're going to go through and we're going to get to see some of the wicked cool projects that Ben has been working on. Uh, so here we go. Yeah, so I have a 10.92 kilowatt system. It's uh, 42 260 watt panels. Um, installed it about four years ago, um, and it's pretty much paid for itself now. I did it myself, so that helps. Um, I also, uh, we have really good net metering rates up here in Vermont, so I get paid 21 cents a kilowatt hour for every kilowatt hour that I generate. Wow. Um, so I, and I pay, I think it's uh, 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Okay. Um, so it makes the payoff period really good. Um, coupled with uh, some incentives from the state, uh, the federal tax credit, 30% tax credit on federal, um, you know, it, it didn't cost me a lot, uh, which is pretty awesome. I'm using a solar edge inverter, so I have uh, optimizers under the panels and that allows me to uh, monitor each one. I mean, the nice part about the solar edge, especially now with the 2017 code, is that it uh, it complies with the code. So when you turn off a disconnect, um, you know, on the outside of the house or on the inside of the house, um, it kills all power from every panel. Um, so you don't have any high voltage when the system's off. So I bought the house about six years ago, built in 59. Bought it, it was about 1150 square feet and then I finished about 500 square feet in the basement, so about 1750. I did spray foam in the basement, I did a heat pump, I did solar, then I did a couple more heat pumps. Um, <laughs> I, I transitioned to all electric, um, got rid of my furnace, and then just recently I did insulation in the attic, uh, and then sealed all around the edges with spray foam and then flew two feet of cellulose into the attic. So because I also just put in a pellet stove. Um, I went through two tons of pellets last year. Um, but that was, the two tons of pellets was basically my heating cost for the year. My heating and electric cost for the year was 450 bucks that I spent on pellets. So the 450 was for pellets. That was it. I don't okay, pay so you're net zero it. on electric. Yeah. Yeah. And are you doing all cooking on electric still or is that still nope, natural gas? that's uh, propane. I got rid of natural gas. Um, I have a barbecue tank uh, that I hooked up to my natural gas line. <laughs> 20 pounds of propane lasts me anywhere from one to two months, depending on how much <laughs> cooking we do. I love so. it. <laughs> it's a 15,000 BTU Mitsubishi cold climate heat pump. Um, so it will heat and cool my house, um, you know, all year round. It, it heats down to negative 18 degrees outdoor temperature. Um, which it gets occasionally, but not too often, luckily, up here. Actually, I've been running my basement one more just to, to keep the basement warm, and I find that the, the, the hot air just comes up through the house and kind of keeps the whole house fairly comfortable. No, I mean, it's, it's pretty sturdy, and, you know, it takes some snow off of that roof as well, and um, I'm not too worried about it. They're a great way to heat, you know. We, we got rid of our furnace. Um, because we didn't need it. Uh, yeah. uh, so what do you do to kind of keep these running more efficiently? Um, kind of keep them at the same temperature. Um, so don't turn the temperature down or, or up a lot, um, you know, daily. Uh, and, uh, you know, when it's really cold out, I run my pellet stove. Um, that, you know, when it's below five, or, well, it's below, yeah, about below five, I, I run the pellet stove and that kind of takes the edge off and keeps these things from working too hard when it's real cold. This is my Smart for Two battery. Bought it off eBay. I kind of wanted to get it up out of the way, so I tucked it in the corner here in the garage. Um, I'm still a little bit nervous about the lithium, so that's why it's not in the basement. 17 and a half kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. um, out of it, I'm getting about 15 kilowatt hours usable. I can run my whole house. But yeah, I can run the heat pumps, I can run, I can't run the dryer, um, but, but that's it. Okay. Um, 48 volt nominal, but it's, it's 64 volts is the maximum I can go. 
Yes, 16S. Yep, the packs in here, is, it's, it's, uh, it was 32S, um, and then they were all, there's three of them tied together in series, so it was about 400 volts. This is my temperature controller here. I have a heating mat uh, taped onto the battery, um, so it, it keeps it fairly warm. This one heating mat is about, it's, it, it pulls 20 watts, which is acceptable to me. It's a seedling starter mat. Um, so it, it gets the temperature warm enough, but not too hot. It says it's 52 degrees, 52.7 degrees in there right now. Um, I have it set at 50 degrees, so it's not running at all. I've also found that when I cycle the battery, it, it keeps itself warm. So this is my, uh, where the battery ties in. So I have six breakers here. This is my uh, PV disconnect. Um, I got my, my MC coming in, um, and that's from my north facing roof uh, PV array. Um, so that's a high voltage DC breaker. Um, and then I have my combined battery output here uh, with two watt aluminum going down to the basement uh, to the inverter. I opened it up a little bit um, and the way this battery is, is it's pouch cells um, and they're spot welded together, which you have a little bit of experience <laughs> with. Um, but I was able to get a screwdriver in there and just pry the spot welds apart um, without, without damaging the tabs at all. Um, and then I bolted uh, mechanical lugs onto each tab. I absolutely love how you brought in the conduit there. This is where I spend a lot of my time. Um, <laughs> This is my solar edge uh, inverter for my grid tide system. We got kind of a, a clouds and sun day right now, so we're making about 6,500 watts. Um, and that's purely grid tide, so um, power goes out, that shuts down, but that's where this comes into play. So this is an MPP solar, um, and it's the PIP uh, 5048MG. Um, so it's got the 64 volt battery input for the maximum, um, and it's got 450 volt uh, PV input. This is a charger and inverter in one. PV coming right in here, it's got a charge controller, and then I can also charge from the grid. Um, you know, I can charge up to 80 amps at a time from the grid, so. I have my critical loads panel here, um, and uh, I'm powering all of my lights, my, I have the two refrigerators, um, all my outlets, uh, the TVs, um, you know, basically everything that we use on a daily basis that we would notice is gone if the power went out. So this uh, transformer here, um, eBay special, and uh, this takes uh, straight 240 volts out of here. Um, and it gives me split phase on the output. Paid $120 for it. It's used, but it works perfectly. I thought about getting like an Outback or a Schneider or, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. It was too much. And, uh, you know, maybe someday I will, but knock on wood, it's been good so far. Um, this was, this was my original MPP solar inverter, which still works. Um, I had this running off of uh, my L16 uh, lead acid battery system here, but I had a battery go bad and I uh, haven't really gotten into it much, but this is only a 2.4 kW, um, so it, it wasn't doing everything I wanted it to do. The transformer, I think, I think I calculated about 60 watts. The inverter was like 20 or 30, um, you know, okay. so all, all said and done, probably about 100. Um, and that's just to, to keep it powered up. So, you know, it's not, not the most efficient way of doing it, um, but for that budget, you know, I, I can't complain. The problem with this inverter and paralleling them is that they say there may be an issue with um, the, the, the input voltage here. So it has line and neutral. Um, and so on these inverters, line is supposed to be 230 volts and neutral is supposed to be neutral. The way I've done it is I've pulled line one and line two. So line two goes to neutral. So if you parallel them, there's a big warning in the manual saying don't parallel them if you're using um, 240, you know, two hot legs. If I had to do it all over yeah, again, I'd probably... Completely oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, I would probably have done a, a large outback system or, or something similar that's grid tied 
uh, with battery backup. So hybrid um, inverter. Yeah, yeah. Right. That you know, it. I mean, doing it straight grid tie is is nice, but I, I love the ability to to operate you know independently. Um, originally, I started thinking about this system right after my twins were born. Um, a couple months later, we had a power outage. That was about two or three days. It was very inconvenient, and I was, you know, I was kind of kicking myself because I say I do this for a living, but my house is dead, and you know. So then I started kind of thinking about what can I do and and what my budget was, and um, so yeah, I, I, if I could do it all over again, knowing what I know now, I would have would have done some sort of a, a grid tie with battery backup system. Yeah, Outback Radiant. It. I'm gonna simulate a power outage. Um, so I'm gonna turn off my main breaker here. Um, and the lights just flickered and now we're running on battery. So I hear a little bit more noise coming from the PIP. Um, but uh, that's it. So we're, we're using about a thousand watts out of the PIP right now. Uh, um, did your microwave uh, lose its time? No, nothing <laughs> lost its time. Uh, my kids are still watching TV, I would assume, uh, but nothing turns off. Um, so I think it's about a 10 millisecond uh, change over time there, and uh, everything just keeps running. That's part of the way I'm able to do this because I don't get yelled at every time <laughs> power goes out or I, I turn it off. What I've noticed with the PIP, and it's the only thing that I don't like about it, is when um, when it's switching between power coming from the PV and power coming from the battery. Um, the voltages fluctuate by about one or two volts and you I, I've noticed my lights just kind of flickering for You know, maybe a minute it, it does it and then something else comes on um, We're using about one point uh, about one kilowatt input from the solar is 1.4 kW and uh, Input to the battery is 120 watts. So the the rest of it is getting used by the house it was a great buy. I mean, the thing is, it's been awesome. You know, it's it, it, it handles everything I've thrown at it. Um, I, I started with a 12 volt system. I had a 24 volt system in between, and now I got a 48. So, 48 is the way to go. If you're gonna do it, do it, do it right. I got 2.3 kW coming from my solar, which is 2.65. KW on the north facing roof. So, uh, and why'd you throw panels on the north? Well, I ran out of room on my south facing roof, uh, <laughs> and I didn't want to do a ground mount array. I, I have a you know, backyard is a play area for the kids, and I didn't want to put that back there. So, um, huge thank you to Ben. Uh, we had to plan this months in advance uh, to get enough time in the schedule uh, where we could coordinate and come up here and video and thank you so much for opening up your home yeah uh, yeah well thanks for coming it's it's been fun yeah Ben anything else you want to add no have have fun doing it and be safe that's that's the most important thing hit the like button uh, share and uh, please leave your comments and questions below and check out the patreon link if you'd like to help support the channel so I work for building energy in Williston Vermont that we do solar heat pumps um, energy audits, weatherization, construction, um, and I've been there for about five years now, so um, I, I get to play with the expensive toys at work, and then I, I come and do it at home when I'm in my spare time. Uh, so it's uh, buildingenergyvt.com. Um, we do grid tie, we do off-grid battery backup, uh, or grid tie with battery backup and off-grid systems.